You are the Son of God. You are Jesus. And at that name, every knee will bow and every will, tongue will confess that you are Lord. We thank you what you did for us on the cross for taking our sin upon yourself, for carrying the weight of all mankind and releasing us from our sin. We give you glory and praise and honor as we worship you. We love you, Jesus. 
In your precious name, amen. You all may be seated. Good morning. Can we just thank the worship band for leading us this morning? I'm really appreciative of what they've done. Thank you, Amber and Miss Jennifer. As I start... As a start, I, uh, I just have a few things that I'm really thankful for in the current community. One thing that I'm really thankful for in this community is that it's defined by worship. That this community is not defined, even though it's a millennial ministry, not defined by our generation, not defined by our music, but it's defined by our worship. And when I say worship, don't confuse me with meaning music, because worship and music are not synonymous. What I mean by worship is that this community is defined by giving value and glory and honor to Christ and then receiving that and finding our value in him. So I'm thankful for the current community that we find our value in Christ. And I'm thankful for the worship band every week as they come here and they direct the body of Christ in pointing the head of Christ or head of the body to Christ. And it makes me think of when I was young and I was learning how to ski my dad would teach us how to ski, and we would get on the ski slopes, and he would say, if you want to turn left, the first thing you have to do is point your head. And then your shoulders will follow, your hips will follow, and then your skis will go left. And if you want to turn right, you point your head, and then you go to the right. And when I think of the current band leading us, I think of them as the head of the body of Christ and pointing us in the direction of Christ in worship. And they're not pointing us to the left or right, but they're pointing us up directly to heaven to where Jesus Christ is. And it makes me think of the song, fix your eyes upon Jesus, on his wonderful face, and the things of this earth will go dim in the light of his glory and grace. And so even when we, we get things wrong, even when we play an incorrect chord or we misspeak or we say something that's not necessarily doctrinally correct, we all mess up. Even when we don't show perfect loving kindness, that those things don't matter, that they're covered over a multitude of sins, that Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith, he covers over those, those wrongs, and he makes them perfect. So I'm thankful for the, the worshiping community, having a community that's defined by worship. The second thing I'm thankful for in the in current community is that this is a community that is participatory and not observatory, participatory and not observatory. When I think of observatory, I think of the Bays Mountain Observatory. And I don't know if you've ever been there. It's an interesting place. You should go sometime. But when you go to the Bays Mountain Observatory, you get in these nice chairs, and you sit down, and you recline, and you cock your head back, and you look at all of the stars. And they, and they have a, a projector that shows all of the constellations, and the planets, and the solar systems. And when you see all that God has created, you can't help but take a nap. I'm serious. I, think, I don't think there's been a time I've been there I have not taken a nap in the Bays Mountain Observatory because that's what happens when you're observing and you're just seeing. Sometimes you're not engaged and you don't take a nap. And that's the difference between participatory and observatory. And that I think this is so essential to us as a Christian community is that we're participatory. Christianity, as opposed to other religions, where other religions ask you to observe practices and beliefs and religious um, doctrines, Christianity asks us to participate. In Psalm 34, it doesn't say, see that the Lord is good. It says, taste and see that the Lord is good. And in John 1, when Jesus is calling his disciples, he doesn't say, see, he says, come and see. He invites us to participate he asks us to taste, to experience, to sense, to smell, to feel. And I love, love coming in here and seeing people tasting and seeing that the Lord is good. I love seeing people participate in worship, participatory as opposed to observatory. And thirdly, the last thing that I'm thankful for in this current community is what Dr. Ravi Zacharias calls a transcendent continuity, and that's such a Dr. Ravi Zacharias word, meaning that no one knows what that means. But as I prayed about it, transcendent continuity. Transcendent meaning things that are above, continuity meaning things that are 
lasting, continuous. Think of y-axis, transcendent, x-axis, continuous. And as the body of Christ, we have a wide, wide spectrum of people from different ages, from different callings, different maturities, and different walks of life. But we are united in the Spirit, in one baptism. And that one baptism that we're united in, in the Holy Spirit, transcends all of those things. And it's continuous from generation to generation. If you look at cultures of antiquity, you see that cultures had this this cultural identity that was transferred from generation to generation because it was transcendent and continuous through generations. And we have a culture of Christian believers. And we have something that unites us and is transcendent from generation to generation. But what we see in our culture today, as cultures have intertwined, is this lack of transcendent continuity. This lack of things that intertwine us. We see generation upon generation trying to reinvent the generation before without the wisdom and checks and balances of the preceding generation. We see millennials trying to reinvent things without the wisdom and checks and balances of the preceding generation. And unfortunately, we see that a lot in the church, particularly in music, because it seems that music has a shelf life. And in that shelf life, we see new generation after new generation reinventing music and reinventing worship without the checks and balances of the previous and prior generations. But what I love, love about the in current community is that when you look out here, you see little kids with flags, you see families, and you see elders and wisdom all in one room, that we're united as a body, that there's something transcendent, the Holy Spirit that transcends our differences and is continuous throughout generations. And even though this is a millennial ministry, it's transcendent through each generation. And so when we say that we're focused on Christ and we praise the name of Christ above all things, that there's no sweeter name, we can see the fruit of that, the fruit of that transcendence in the makeup of our congregation. So I challenge the current community to continue to be participatory, Continue to be defined by worship, but continue to be together as one, not defined by generation, a music, a style, or even a personality of someone who's on the stage, but by the Holy Spirit and the baptism that unites us all. So as I get started, if you don't know me, my name is Jonathan Russell, and I just want to share three things personally to each one of you all. I'm excited to be here. This is the first opportunity I've ever had to do something like this. And so I'm thankful in advance for the grace that you extend to me as I try to communicate what I believe God has shared on my heart. So I'm thankful for the grace, firstly. Secondly, I'm so grateful for Celebration Church. I've grown.